welcome back, dear friends. I'm glad that you came back to see more videos in on my Running Hermit YouTube channel. Today we are starting new series focusing on method and method and you will be able to follow me for a course of 4 months and see how much improvement can amateur athlete, which is having very limited time to train, improve using solely this method. This will be actually kind of a 4 month series, I will be posting videos on different aspects of training, results, as well as nutrition. I assume that most of you do have certain familiarity with this method, but anyhow I decided to make an overview for all of you to see what this method is about, how the training should be made and what results can we expect. Whether you are just starting with your running or your seasoned athlete, training method is one of the key questions you are gonna face. How should I train? Where should I train? What should I do to get better? During the past three years since I started to train, I have tried different methods. I have had actually very mixed results. Usually I was able to prepare myself well for certain races. But I have faced a lot of negative issues connected generally to my health and also others. My main training mantra was that if it doesn't hurt, it doesn't make you stronger or it doesn't make you faster. I was pushing myself hard, which was leading to overtraining, small injuries. I was able to get in, train for 3-4 months and then either I got sick and had to start again or I had to quit because I lost the motivation. I was simply getting exhausted especially or on my long runs or long rides. In the end of the year 2014 I was again forced to stop training due to small injuries so I decided to re-evaluate all my training methods and searched for something new and method and method seemed to be the answer for my problems so I started to dig deeper here is what I found method and method which is also known as a maximum aerobic function or low heart rate training is a method which was developed by Dr. Phil Maffetton during 1970s when heart rate monitoring became to be a serious thing among top athletes. He coached many endurance athletes, especially during late 80s and 90s, as well as thousands of amateurs. Some of those athletes which have been solely using this method have been very successful. Among them, Mark Allen or Amanda Lowden, Colin Cannon. You can find good description of this method in the big book of endurance training and racing or current new book 159. What is amazing about Mephaton's method is that it is suitable for all types of endurance athletes, not only runners, but it's very good for cyclists and somehow for swimmers, even though there are certain limitations. It doesn't really matter whether you are a professional athlete or beginner, because since it is more like a training philosophy, this method does give you only certain guidance how to train, but following them should bring the results you need. So what are the core principles and assumptions of method and method? The issue most of the athletes face during their career or during their training is to that the body cannot simply cope with the type and amount of training you are putting in and eventually the body breaks. Uh, as method and puts it, there has to be mental, chemical and structural aspect of one's body aligned to allow top performance. The body needs to st stay healthy and balanced for a long time to allow cumulative progress. Only by step by step you can reach the goal. So this method is focused on keeping you healthy throughout a long period of time As we have understood, 
it is necessary to create a follow plan which just let you perform repeatedly and continuously for a long time so your results can get better. Since all high levels activities, anaerobic activities, do create huge pressure on the organism, they should be limited or avoided. To minimize the physical stress, training needs to be performed in aerobic zones. Aerobic training does lead to activation and improvement of slow twitch muscle fibers, which are much more suitable for endurance training and they allow you to build aerobic legs. Aerobic training teaches muscle how to be more efficient in burning fat, hence limiting amount of sugar needed as a fuel. In order to assure that your training is done in aerobic zones, heart rate monitor is an essential tool for your training. So here we are, let's go to specifics. How do I find my training zone? Where, how should I train under Mephetan's method? Most successful is 184 formula, which determines your maximum heart rate, MEF, also known as maximum aerobic function. So how do we get there? General formula is following MEF equals 180 minus your age and then you add 5 or minus 5 range according to your current fitness level. But under here you can see what number you should subtract, subtract or add to get your final math. If you are under 25 or over 55 you should add to final number extra 5 beats if you're under 20, you put another 5 beats. Then, your optimal training zone is between MEF, which is the number you just calculated, and MEF minus 10 beats. Very simple example. If you are 32 years old and have been injured or have been ill for during past two years quite a lot, your MEF should be 180 minus 32 for age and minus 5 for your fitness. That means it's 143 beats per minute. Math minus 10 is 133 beats per minute. And optimal training zone is between 133 and 143 beats per minute. Finding this zone is essential for your training. How to train? The main focus is to do all the training under MEF, under your max calculated heart rate. To increase aerobic pace fast, it is suggested to keep training within the optimal zone because if you are under, then you are basically not improving. If you are actually training very close to MEF, which is the top tier, it is the most effective type of training. You start your training usually with 5 to 10 minutes of some kind of a warm up, which should be about 10 beats slower than what you are expecting to reach during the day. Also, to support fat burning capabilities of the muscles, Mephaton suggests to focus on a high fat, low sugar diet. The nutritional part of Mephaton method will be discussed further in one of my future videos. Phil Mephaton is very much against pre-workout stretching and does not recommend it for the for the training. This is another aspect I would like to address in the future. Like in every training method, there has to be a way to monitor your progress. In this type of training, it's called MEF test, and I will be talking about it in a couple slides. Although anaerobic training should be by default avoided during Mephaton's method training, there are certain cases in which it can be added into the program. I will talk about them in one of the last slides of this presentation. So for most of you, it is probably quite difficult to imagine how your training should be done. Since you have only these zones, it could actually be quite boring to be training all the time in certain zone without any plan. For me, I have created customized training program 
which you can download. Of course, each training program should be custom built to your needs. You don't need anybody to actually create it for you. But you have to start your training program on a level you are adjusted to. If you are absolute beginner, you should start with very short 20 to 30 minutes runs, maybe 2-3 times a week. If you are already training for a long time, just use your average training week to create your training program. I used to be running 5 times per week between 5 and 7 hours. So my training plan does reflect it. For each day I set the length of my training. It could be also distance if you want. And I set maximum heart rate should I be following. I'm trying to have like little harder days close to math, some slower days which is 5 beats below. As you see, the lengths of my training days differ throughout the week. The example you have seen have been from week 9. But as you see, I'm starting very slowly on 5 hours per week and slowly every other week I'm adding extra time of training. But if I don't see an improvement, I will have to adjust my plan. So let's talk a little further about math test. The math test, as I said, is a reflection of how your body is taking up the training and telling you whether you should do some adjustments or just keep doing as you are doing. It should be performed at least once a month. I will do every two weeks. Doing math test more often than every two weeks could actually be counterproductive. So how do we perform this math test? First of all, we have to find an even course. It should be about 8 kilometers long, or 5 miles if you are working in miles. And you will always perform the test on the same course. A very good um, solution would be track, flat road, or path around the water, possibly a lake. Or you can also do it in treadmill, which I will be doing, since conditions in Iceland are not very stable. All the math tests should be also done under similar conditions. If you cannot meet those conditions or you are feeling bad, it's better to skip or postpone the test until everything is into normal. Because all these aspects can reflect on your performance. Once we have conditions number one and two met, let's warm up well for about 15 minutes. Make sure that your heart rate monitor is well performing and you have enough battery. Set up your watch, phone or friend to be able to take your time for each kilometer or mile doesn't matter what distance you choose as long as they are consistent. Start jogging around and once your heart rate is close to math, your test can start. You will be running the distance on heart rate as close to math as possible. During the run, you will record your splits for each kilometer or mile. Many watches and phones do it automatically for you. And after you finish, you cool down. If you have done everything correctly, then each consecutive mile or kilometer should be slightly slower than previous. After the test, save your results for the comparison. While the first results will just give you some idea about your overall fitness or aerobic fitness, important step happens when you start comparing the data between math tests. It is basically benchmark of your progress which allows comparison and adjustment to your training. What are the possible outcomes of your math test results? If the comparison between following weeks shows that you are progressing from one measuring to another, you can just congratulate yourself, keep doing what you are doing. Slowly adding the mileage or time of your training, you can also slowly increase the length of the training close to math. If you are progressing continuously at least for three months, you can actually add some anaerobic training according to the guidelines I'm gonna put further. Another possible outcome out of your math test results is stagnation. That means basically that between two tests you didn't improve, neither your results were worse. So what does it mean? Stagnation can, could mean two things. First of them could be plateau, which is some kind of a stage. You basically reach a certain border of your overall fitness and the body needs to get adjusted before it can start improving again. Or it could be a sign of underlying problems either connected to your training or connected to other things outside training. 
It could be about sleep, stress or lifestyle. If your stagnation phase has been reached relatively early in your training cycle, then it might mean that your body is maybe facing some issues and you should not be adding extra training load. If you reach this stagnation later on during your training, let's say after 3, 4, 5, 6 months, it could mean that you have reached this natural border under these uh, training conditions. You should consider after 2 months of stagnation adding some kind of anaerobic workout to make your body adjust to higher paces. On the other side, if you already have anaerobic training within your training cycle, you should be considering to pull it off since your body might not have adjusted well to this kind of training. And the final possibility that you try to avoid is regression. What it means is that from one test to another your results have become worse. It is a very clear sign that there is something wrong with your training or with your body. Mafetan suggests to stop all activities above MEF immediately and take few days off. After that, start slowly training on lower heart rates and slowly increase the training load and times as well as heart rate. It could be also a result of some kind of illness, stress, sleep and other factors. If you think that's the case, try to make adjustments so you can start improving again. And one of my final slides will be about anaerobic training. Although, under Mephetan's method, anaerobic training is considered to be harmful, there are certain cases in which it can be used. So how do you know that you are training anaerobically? Since MEF, as we calculated before, is the top border of your aerobic zone, every training above MEF is considered anaerobic. Why do we do this anaerobic training? Well, it's basically to increase speed for races and teach body how to deal with stress and possible lactic acid during those events. So anaerobic training could be introduced into training, let's say after 10 to 12 weeks of progress, continuous progress, that means you are not see any declining values, or after very long plateau, lasting for about two months. Anaerobic training, in any case, should not be overused. Recommended is to use it only once every 7 to 14 days for a period of time between 20 to 40 minutes or about 5 miles. It should not be also used before math test or after or before race. Since anaerobic training can be quite harmful, it has to be used very carefully and increased gradually. If you introduce anaerobic training into your training plan, it's better to increase frequency of math tests so you are able to catch any problems when they arise. If anaerobic training is causing regression in your, in your math tests, it should be immediately dropped. Introduction of anaerobic training into your schedule should be done gradually. Under here you can see how I would actually introduce some anaerobic intervals into my schedule and how I would progress throughout three to six months. So let's recap. My Fathom method is a basically training philosophy based on assumption that to be competitive for a long time you need to become aerobically efficient and stay healthy. To reach both, all training should be done in aerobic zone under your MEF. Through, through this training, your body will learn to use slow twitch muscles, burn fat more effectively and you will get much further with less sugar. Due to nature of the training, overtraining, illnesses or stress injuries are much less common. Performance during time will increase in correlation with increasing of your efficiency. Heart rate monitor is an essential tool for everyday training and races and progress is monitored through math tests regularly and training is adjusted to ensure long-term improvement. I hope you enjoyed this first video from my series on method and method. I expect that you have good understanding what this method is about and how to create your own training. What do you think about it? Have you tried it and with what results? Do you think that this method is better than others for endurance athletes? Please leave me comment under this video. Don't forget to subscribe for upcoming videos following my progress 
and explaining other aspects of this method. See you in my next video showing results from my first week.